Nick Walker was one of Boston's finest police officers. The kind of guy that doesn't flinch in a firefight. Which is unfortunate because he died. As his soul drifted peacefully towards eternal rest in the ever after, Nick felt his life's work had been accomplished. But he was wrong. The universe wasn't finished with him. R.I.P.D. is a comic book adapted to a movie that's being made into a video game. To most people, myself included, it looks like a clone of Men in Black with Ryan Reynolds in the dude. Ryan Reynolds plays Nick Walker, a cop that died at the hands of his partner after the two steal from a crime scene. His skills during his career catch the eye of the Rest in Peace department, and he chooses to join the department as opposed to rotting in hell. He is partnered with Roy Pulsifer, played by Jeff Bridges, who is an old hat at catching the evil souls called Dettos. I'm going to cut the story portion short, because there isn't one. This game is focused on fighting multiple ways of enemies with a partner. In fact, if you look really closely at this game, it looks exactly like something else I played. Oh. Ah, that's it. God mode. That's, that's just a reskin of God mode. That's that's fantastic. That's the laziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, I guess the big difference is that you play with two players instead of four, so you don't have to struggle so hard to find other people that want to actually play this game. I want to cut this review short and simply say this. I don't think anyone should pay $10 to play a mod of an average game. God mode receives, I mean, RIPD receives two stars from Geek Citadel. If you really want more information on this game, go ahead and check out our full review of God Mode. The cab glides over Manhattan Bridge, a solitary figure ignoring the speed limit. In my head, a quartet of pneumatic hammers continues to bang on my temples, reminding me that there's still a good amount of whiskey in my veins. Ah, uh, the good old days, filled with mobsters, prohibition, and private dicks. Nowadays, the word private dick would be considered the same thing, but back in the 1930s, it was the moniker for detectives. Jack Del Nero is a PI with a sordid past involving a former police career and a mafia case that got him locked in a birdcage with no one to listen to his song. Jack has gotten himself in a bit of a mess that ends with him bleeding out on the tarmac. It was destiny, Del Nero. We travel 24 hours into the past to unravel how Del Nero caught a slug in the chest for his troubles. It involves a girl, a man from his past, and a chief with a hard on for putting Jack in jail. I didn't kill McLean. Say you're guilty, Del Nero. The story is reminiscent of many classic movies, and even a few of the obvious cliches surrounding them. It's the kind of fiction that people have stopped exploring, and it's refreshing to see the style revived so faithfully. The story is a very close representation of films like The Maltese Falcon. We all know about L.A. Noir and its fantastic capturing of the atmosphere, but Face Noir takes it a bit deeper by constructing an excellent yarn that plays out like a Bogart movie. The most appealing factor of the title is that it combines a familiar and fun storyline with a classic point-and-click adventure system. It does mix it up slightly by allowing you to move objects in 3D space, but otherwise it sticks to the classic 2D adventure method. Jack even has the option to combine two similar topics to sway others to do his bidding. The downsides are clearly visible in the character models themselves, which pale in comparison to the surrounding atmospheric environment. The stiff and lanky character models are as wooden as a tree. Jack walks along with his hands stuck to his sides, and barely lifts his arms to do much else. This only brings the value of the title down further after seeing the low resolution and generic faces of each person. Del Nero is somewhat acceptable, but the other main characters, especially women, are generally bland. The story and the humor are the best parts of the title, but the gameplay often reduces Jack to mediocre tasks just to add on some time. No, no switch here. It's usually acceptable if it happens once in a while, but every new area will have Jack fixing phones, filling out forms, or even searching around for his gun and bullets. If the only way to get his damn cab back is filling out one of these forms, I'll do it. But I'll do it my way. We get that Jack has a rough life, but I do not think that constant menial chores is as compelling as unfailingly getting into rough spots. What's all of this worth when it comes down to it? The game has a $20 price tag associated with it, and that's a game changer for the content provided to us. It all comes down to how much of a soft spot you have for an old school detective story, and how much you can ignore the archaic graphics and bland voice work. I think I've already teased him enough. I have no doubts about it. The real deciding factor could lie in how much you enjoy the semi-racist banter of Jack's Chinese sidekick. Interested in your game, but if you're Mexican, I'm Abe Lincoln. I'm Mexican. Adopted Mexican. I'm a bit of a sucker for detective games, and I enjoy the classic films that this game attempts to replicate. It isn't without its shortcomings in the least, but it serves as a solid point-and-click adventure title. 
Face Noir receives 3 stars out of 5 from Geek Citadel. The atmosphere, story, and mechanics are solid, but the rest falls a tad flat for the asking price. Of course. And what's your uncle's name? Mm, my uncle called... he called... Diego. Diego de la Vega. Diego de la Vega is Zorro. Yes, yes! His friends often call him Zorro. He's make-believe. He doesn't exist. What? You tell me my uncle no exists? 